Welcome back to the channel guys, today we're going to be looking at making our very own Xbox expansion card. Welcome back to the channel guys. Ultimately I wanted to make this video because there isn't really much content on this at all. And the videos and tutorials I did find weren't in English so I had no idea what was actually going on so I just thought it made more sense if I just went ahead and got the correct tools and parts and made a video myself. This will be the definitive answer to whether it actually works or it doesn't work. I see a lot of people saying that they can format these but once they formatted them they're unable to play Series X and S enhanced games. I've seen other people saying they can't even get it to appear when they plug it in the console. So we're going to go ahead and try it ourselves and see if any of those issues happen to me. And I'm going to go and show you the tools and the method to getting this set up correctly. So fingers crossed this works. I'll be finding out if it works at the same time you will be. So let me get started by showing you the bits that you need to do this. Okay guys, so the first thing you will need is a computer and obviously an Xbox series console but apart from those two things everything else you'll need is on the desk here so starting from the left we've got the SSD adapter this particular model is I'll just bring it close to the camera there this particular model is the Iolin I'm not sure how that's pronounced it's the ALXB2063 this is the particular one I'm going to use today anyway there are multiple variants of these online the next thing you'll need is this particular SSD and it's absolutely crucial that you get this exact one. This SSD is the CHSN530. There is another SN530 which is the PC SN530. That one will not work so you need this exact SSD, the CHSN530. Other SSDs might work but this is the one in the instruction manual for the adapter. The third thing you'll need is a NVMe to USB reader. This is what we'll be using to format the SSD in our computer. And finally, you'll need a heat pad and a screwdriver to disassemble the adapter and also apply the heat pads to the SSD itself to keep it cool when it's in use. These two things did come with the adapter itself, so hopefully it's the same case for you as well. But without further ado, let's get on to the steps. So the first thing you need to do is you need to put your SSD in the reader like so. My particular reader doesn't have a screw hole for a 2230 SSD, unfortunately, so I've had to use an elastic band. This is okay, as long as you don't use anything metal, you should be okay just to wrap it around like that, just to make sure the SSD doesn't come loose and is connected to the pins correctly. So once you've done this, we need to take the reader over to the computer, and that's what I'm going to do now, and I'll meet you there. Okay guys, so we've now assembled the SSD into the adapter and I've plugged it into the computer. So, just going to read you the instructions that came with the adapter, with the expansion card adapter. Western Digital CHSM530 Formatting Tutorial. And it says, open Disk Genius software, delete all partitions, convert the partition to MBR format, create a new partition, save and confirm. To be quite honest, we're not going to use Disk Genius because there's no need to do that. The exact same result can be reached using Windows. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bottom left here and we're going to click on Start and we're going to type into the search Disk Part. And we're going to then hit Enter where it says Run Command. Select Yes and we'll be met with this window here. So from this window, we don't want to type list disk. There we go. And you should see a list of disks in your computer. Now, for me, disk zero there is my boot drive. Disk one will be the CD drive and there's no CD in there. Disk two will be my backup drive, which just leaves disk three, which is 867 gig, which is the SSD. So what we're going to do is we're going to, for me, I'm going to select disk 3, so I'm going to type select disk 3. 
There we go, and it should say disk three is a selected disk or whatever disk number for you. Now you're going to type clean, and before you hit enter, you're just going to triple check that the disk is the correct disk here because you don't want to be clearing off anything important. So I'm pretty confident it's disk three for me, so I'm going to hit enter now. And there you go, it should say disk part succeeded in cleaning the disk. So once you've done that, you can exit out of that window, no problem. Then you want to open start up again, and you want to type create. And if you type create, you'll get a couple of these, but you'll also get this one here, create and format hard disk partitions. So you want to select that one. And it should pop straight up with this. If it doesn't, no problem, I'll just cancel out of that. If you just scroll down your list, you might not have to scroll down as far as me, you'll find it here, an initialized, not initialized, unallocated disk. There we go. So all you want to do is right click on it, initialize disk. And if you remember from the instructions, it said it needs to be MBR. So just make sure the MBR partition style is selected. You then want to press OK. And it should now say online and you should still have an allocated space there. So what we need to do is it did say we needed one partition. So we're going to right click new simple volume, press next and next again and next again. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to leave it as NTFS. It didn't actually stipulate which file system to use, but I'm just going to go ahead and assume that it's NTFS because that's the most commonly used file system by Microsoft Windows, etc. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to press next and finish. And there you go. It says formatting and let's give it a second. There we go. So now it says new volume, NTFS, and it's given it a drive letter as well. So that's brilliant. So then all you need to do once that's done is close after that window. Go down to the bottom right of your machine and find this little hardware eject icon. So eject that and you're all good to go. So when you're assembling your adapter, just make sure you apply the thermal pads to both sides of the SSD and remove these plastic protectors as well. Okay, so I've got my Xbox Series X hooked up here, uh, all powered up to the monitor over here everything's going on so what i'm going to do i've got the expansion card that i've just made up there and i'm just going to insert it so let's just see how that goes in so it should go in that way as far as i'm aware okay so that's gone in now let's just see if we get anything on the screen so Nothing's come up as of yet. Okay, so let's go to storage devices. Okay, so nothing's appeared there. Okay, guys, so it's been a couple of days since that last clip. And I've learned quite a lot in the past couple of days. And I've tried virtually all ways of partitioning and formatting this drive and no matter what i try it does not work i have been able to get the xbox to detect the adapter and it does also allow me to copy games to it but when you try and play them you get this error and this error also displays when you actually plug the adapter in i have seen posts and comments on reddit and other forums from people who have also got this error and it looks like it may be a recent update from Microsoft that's the culprit. I am slightly conflicted though, as I do occasionally see reviews on Amazon and also on AliExpress for these adapters, where people say they have used this particular drive and they've had no issues. I've also seen these adapters with SSDs already in for sale on eBay and the sellers do get good feedback, which pushes me to believe that there is some way of getting these working. So the question is, what is it that's causing mine to not work? And to be quite honest, I do not know. There's a multitude of 
different reasons why this could potentially not be working for me. First one could simply be this adapter is faulty, although I highly doubt it. Second is that the Xbox Series consoles use a multitude of SSDs from different brands and it's possible that you would need to match the exact SSD that's in your console. Mine is still in the warranty period so I'm unable to open it up at the current time to check which SSD is actually in my Series X so unfortunately I can't confirm or deny if that's an issue or not. But to be honest guys if I'm going to select the most likely reason as to why this isn't working then I would say it's to do with Microsoft updating the Xboxes and preventing these from working. I did see a comment on a video that wasn't in English that I managed to translate the comment to English. Ultimately what the person said is that they were using one of these in their Series S for months with no issues. They unplugged it from their Series S into a Series X and the error immediately came up. And from then on, that error was popping up no matter what console they plugged it into, even their originally Series S. So that heavily supports the idea that this is an update related issue and not something to do with the hardware. On that note, guys, I don't recommend you go and do this. Don't spend the money. Don't waste the money. Even with this correct SSD, the console is rejecting it. So if you really do need some extra storage for your Xbox, just go and buy the official adapters. If you want my opinion on which one of the two brands to go for, I would recommend the Western Digital one because from the videos and research that I've seen and done, it looks like the Western Digital does perform better. But if you did want two terabytes of space, unfortunately you will have to go with Seagate as they currently are the only ones that, that supply the two terabyte expansion cards. If somebody out there has got one of these that works and it's a one terabyte model, then please get in contact with me as I may have one last idea to get this working. And if I'm able to try this idea and it's successful, I will update everybody with a new video showcasing that. I hope above anything else this has provided some well-needed closure on this subject and I'll catch you guys in the next one.